Elon Musk saying the two economies are like conjoined twins. The Starbucks CEO saying there are limitless possibilities in China. Tim Cook saying the countries have enjoyed a symbiotic relationship. And Jamie Dimon saying while trade could decrease, uh, it won't be a decoupling. For more on this complicated political and business relationship, we turn to CNBC contributor Michelle Caruso Cabrera and Patrick Chovanek. He's economic advisor at Silvercrest Asset Management and a longtime China watcher. Welcome to you both. Michelle, what's, what's the importance of Blinken's trip? Well, Blinken going at nearly the same time as Bill Gates is just so emblematic of how deeply intertwined our two countries are economically. And yet at the same time, we have a deeply troubled relationship diplomatically. Um, and American business is in a real pickle at this point because why are they going there? They need the Chinese economy. And yet at the same time, Xi Jinping has been changing the rules of the road. When American businesses started investing in the 80s and 90s, it was about reducing the role of the Communist Party in the economy. It was about making it easier to do business. Now that Xi Jinping has been in power, it's about increasing the role of the Communist Party, making it much more difficult to do business there. And at the same time, he's talking about retaking Taiwan, which is why Anthony Blinken is headed over there, because we have this very, very tense moment. If they were to do that it would lead to a really catastrophic situation. It, it's, a, it's a tough situation. Michelle, you have an interesting point about how China is actually helping the Federal Reserve. I want to come back to that. But before I do that, I want to stay on point here with Patrick Chovanek and ask you the question, Patrick, if I might. Is Blinken's visit more about making progress with China or just managing conflict with China? A course at Columbia about U.S.-China negotiations. And one of the main takeaways was, while it's nice to have agreement, a lot of it is about managing conflict. And that's exactly what the focus will be right now. There's been a dramatic um, decline in the relationship between U.S. and China. It's probably at its worst level since diplomatic relations were opened up, at least at the political or geopolitical level. Um, and they need to bring that out of a spiral. There's been some talk about how, well, this is just sort of a failed effort or a doomed effort by the Biden administration to go back to engagement. I think that I, I doubt that real constructive engagement is going to come out of that. Neither side is the least interested in budging on some of the things that, that have been a source of tension. But the more confrontational a stance we have towards China, the more important it is to have lines of communication open, to avoid misinterpretation, miscommunication, because those are the things that could really cause things to spiral out of control in ways that nobody wants. That, that is the way it feels to me, that we're talking about managing conflict here and managing communications lines, which have been so um, sort of polluted, let me put, use that word, uh, and, and that's dangerous. There's a real concern within the national security uh, you know, establishment in, in Washington, D.C., about the lack of communication between our two militaries. And when that's not happening, then things can happen. You can have accidents. This is why Henry Kissinger, the former Secretary of State, has been banging on about getting the equivalent of a red telephone between the U.S. and China. Other members of the national security establishment say, well, it's called email and cell phone. The problem is they don't answer. Um, it's really it's really quite concerning. I think that's the basic goal here is to try to make sure that we can communicate when there's something that happens we need to be able to talk to each other to avoid hey, hey. accidents and war. Uh, ironically, and mind, go ahead, this, Patrick. This visit is taking place after a whole series of canceled meetings. Um, you know, Blinken was supposed to go in February. Then there was the spy balloon episode that made that impossible. Um, Secretary of Defense Austin was supposed to meet with his counterpart in Singapore. That didn't come off. So there is a concern in D.C., at least within the administration, that those lines of communication have been absent. The thing I was going to add also is that the lines of communication that are open seem to be the business world. You know, what, even if the, even if it's worse mm -hmm. doing business there than it used to be, who, who's the tail and who's the dog when it comes to American mul multinationals or those with business in China? In other words, are we better off if they forge ahead uh, with, uh, you know, um, expansion there, even when people, like when we talk to Dennis Unkovich, he says he's adv advising more companies to leave than go into China these days. But do we want them to continue to try to deepen ties or is that going to be considered, you know, um, a misfortunate choice down the road. That's that's a very interesting point because these companies are in a difficult situation. You know, there's all the, the talk in DC is all about decoupling, reshoring. Well, you know, some companies can do that, but for a lot of companies, they're in China for the Chinese market and they get a lot of revenues from China. 
And so they can't just disengage in that way. Um, they are concerned about not just the geopolitical risks about the U.S.-China relationship, but also about the business climate in China and how things are turning. You know, just in the past day or so, um, AIIB, the, the infrastructure bank in China, the, uh, uh, someone, a Canadian who worked for, for uh, that bank, actually fled Beijing because he was critical of the role of the Communist Party, and he had to sneak out of the country. Um, so there's a lot of concern about the business climate in China, the safety of professionals, mm -hmm. foreign professionals working in China, that, you know, business leaders try to sort of put a happy face on.